Once I went to the United States, okay, I joined an evangelical fellowship for one year, just to, you know, I attended services. So I had it the Catholic way and the Christian way, you know. Uh, yeah, well, they, they use this, they use this in, the, in the States, you know, Christian-like, Protestant, you know. And basically, well, some unforeseen uh, 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 events happened, okay, unfortunately, post-September 11th, and I was approached by the FBI and the CIA, well, wow, that's a big asset there, you know. I had quit Hezbollah, I quit everything, and I became uh, a party guy, and you know, making up for all what I missed before. And then, I was unfortunate by the aftermath of 9-11, and the guys were like, this is an asset. They approached me with a security uh, agenda, and I just couldn't take it. And my answer was, I don't want to be a petty agent. I'd rather serve my cause through intellectual, academic preaching and uh, reach outs. And it didn't work. It was like the security concern was just like on the, on, the, on the minds of everybody. It's like, no, no, no. And I was subject to an organized, unfortunately, blackmail where I was deported from the United States. I finished my PhD studies in resource economics at the University of Florida in Gainesville. And I just, they didn't let me get my degree, okay? And uh, I was subject to the blackmail there at the embassy, unfortunately, here. I didn't compromise. My slogan was on the first page of my book, live free or die trying. I didn't leave Hezbollah to compromise my freedom with anybody else. That left me bitterness, uh, bitter after I fell in love with America and what America stands for, I'm still in love with America, despite the bitterness that mounted up. It was really hard to take it from my college, my people, you know. I remember like when I got there, I bent down and kissed the ground and I was looking for the great Satan. Where is the great Satan? <laughs> Hardworking people, double shifts. I was not discriminated upon back then. I was appreciated. And I had like, I remember like this thing in my mind, yeah, I want to be here. I want to be where I'm appreciated, not just merely tolerated. But unfortunately, if you don't catch up with your, with your past, it catches up with you. I'm still going through this thing. No compromises. I remember like I talked about this to uh, uh, Reverend George Haddad. He was my um, kind of mentor back at the Evangelical School, National Evangelical School in Nabati, South Lebanon. And he just like, we had a long discussion about that. And I was so angry. Why is America doing this to me and stuff? And he's like, Ram, you have to be patient. It will come. You're right. They need some time to realize that you're good. You're good to your fellow human being citizens to America. And I'm waiting on that, writing. I poured down my thoughts on paper, all my grievances, back to the book. I'm going to talk more about the faith, religion thing, just to finish my briefing. And then, uh, basically, so I wrote the book in Arabic. It was released and created a big fuss, having having been unprecedented. Some people left Hezbollah, but nobody there to write. It's just something very private. They, there's almost zero tolerance within these groups, and they just couldn't take it. Thank God the book got a great exposure. It became top number one in the Arab countries, according to Virgin, made, it, made a big stir. A lot of fuss, a lot of TV, a lot of exposure. Probably that might have helped. And I got like about 300 interviews with journalists. Not a single one did not ask me the question, why are you still alive? 